A hot spot for tourists along the Blue Ridge Parkway is closed again tonight because of the government shutdown. You or your kids may know Molly. Have you heard of her? Well, she's a party drug and the cause of four deaths over the last week from Boston to New York. But Molly is also right here in the Queen City. Three suspects are in jail accused of stealing an ATM in Shelby. Tonight, investigators say the trio may be responsible for similar thefts across the area. This is just one of the many 75 year old oak trees that fell during Thursday night storm. And according to residents, when this tree uprooted, it fell across the street, knocking down the neighboring power lines. And as you can imagine, the excitement is building out here at UNC Charlotte as the students, the school and the community are just counting down the days until kickoff. Three caskets and 30 bottles of embalming fluid are missing from a funeral home in South Carolina. Tonight, police and union are still looking for the person who broke into the Gibson and Brown funeral home. City and state officials have been talking about the importance of staying off the roads. And we really can't urge enough that if you don't have to go out, Please just stay there. Ice skating rinks are fun, but not when you're driving on them. Reporting live in North Charlotte, Christine Noel, WCCB News. The Affordable Care Act has been a sore spot for Congress. Heavy web traffic is slowing down people applying for the new health care exchange that opened today. This is a really exciting time. The Panthers won the first game, first preseason game. Yep. Now we're on to game two. Are the guys doing any sort of crazy ritual? right yeah, now we would get all excited like okay now it's time to go it's time to go guys football players officially crazy hey whatever <laughs> works if that's what they got to do to win that's all we care about that's moose right. moose yeah. we thanks so much for being here did you happen to catch that uh michigan penn state game i'm done i'm done <laughs> i was just curious <laughs> from I'm one done. penn state person to a done. michigan look at you with your red <laughs> accents honey i feel like i'm cut in half honey with a chair. she her snatch is just <laughs> stop a North Carolina teen says his mom tried to have the gay beat out of him. Police say she made the teen's little brother do the dirty work. Students in East Charlotte taking a risky walk to and from school. They're crossing six lanes of traffic and jumping concrete barriers along Independence Boulevard. You were very smart. You knew a lot of big words. You could have these adult conversations with people at a very young age. And you said that you were offended when you were on stage at five years old because of a salt mark on the stage. Tell the story. I was offended. Doesn't they think I don't know where to stand? How dare they? No. Governor Pat McCrory's new teacher pay promise is not satisfying some longtime educators. Veteran teachers say higher base pay doesn't help them. That's, not, the that's not helping. That people that have e-cigs are trying to quit smoking, so putting them, surrounding them by smokers <laughs> that have real smoke, like that makes absolutely zero sense. <laughs> it's kind of a stress reliever. Like if you're stressed out, man, what's better than just beating a bag at the end of the day? <laughs> Hundreds of little ones already rung in the new year out at Romero Baird and Park where First Night Charlotte is currently underway. A scary stop for gas all caught on tape. Check it out. Two men attack a family's car while a baby is in the back seat. Now one guy jumped in the driver's side door and hit the passengers. From the lit up skyline to the bustling sidewalks, the energy isn't the only thing booming in Charlotte. Businesses are expanding, the population is increasing, schools are overflowing. The Crown Town effect is being felt in Union County on streets, in neighborhoods, and in the schools. Every school is about to change. Last month, the Union County School Board announced a redistricting plan to help ease overcrowding and manage growth within the county's 53 schools. I was upset, my husband was upset, our children were upset. A plan that has led to a countywide public outcry from parents like Melissa Merrill. She and her family moved to Stallings from Myers Park back in 2005. We didn't move here to send our children to another town. And we want to stay at Porter Ridge. If the redistricting does go through, their five minute commute to school will turn into a half hour. It's a growing pain that will impact thousands of families. And it is very upsetting to think that we've invested all these years into our, into our neighborhood school and we're going to be pushed out so that they can make room for a new homeowner. And the influx of new homeowners is on the horizon. From 2000 to 2012, Union County saw a nearly 70% increase in population, a jump of approximately 123,000 residents to 208,000. And the growth in this area is not slowing down. So you can see the whole area has just really had a tremendous amount of development. John Chester, a professor at UNC Charlotte's Urban Institute, says Union County is a hot spot for families who want to live near but not in Charlotte. 
He says while some of the movement is coming from people crossing county lines, a large percentage is coming from other areas of the country. A major balancing act for school systems, which often results in redistricting. When there's no choice, they have to deal with students when they show up for school. A sea of pink t-shirts, candlelight, and the sounds of amazing grace filled an outdoor gazebo in Dallas tonight to pay respects to a little life taken far too soon. We're wearing pink for Lexi. The life of 13-month-old Alexis Hooper. It was sad just to know that she's not with us anymore. We're just here to support, to let them know we love them. For the Hooper family, Christmas Day ended in tragedy. Lexi was killed when her family's car crossed the median and smashed into an oncoming truck on US-74 in Wade. Lexi's mother, Kelsey, suffered a spinal fracture. Her father, Alex, was also hurt, and an uncle in the back seat is out of the hospital. According to new information from Wadesboro Police, both drivers tested negative for drugs or alcohol, and speed and fatigue were not factors in the crash. Investigators also say Lexi was properly fastened into her car seat. I was teary-eyed, too. can imagine the loss of a grandchild or a child. Either way. Dallas resident Jack Ray says the loss of a child like Lexi brings a type of sadness that resonates through an entire community. But he says through tragedy brings togetherness. I hope in some way that, that this inspires the family. He hopes their prayers will bring strength to the Hooper family as they mourn the loss of their little angel. Time he came around, he kind of looked at us and put his hand through his pants. Teresa Fisher says her daughter's innocence was taken in a flash. That a jogger came by and that he stopped and saw them and then reached down into his pants and pulled up his genitalia for the girls to see. I mean, he kept looking at us weird. Ten-year-old Shaylin Fisher says a man jogging in her neighborhood over the weekend flashed her and her 12-year-old cousin. It was really dis like disturbing, disgusting. It happened at Monteith Park off of Holly Springs Lane in Huntersville. It's a popular grassy area in front of the Fisher's home where kids from the neighborhood like to play. The two girls tell me that they were playing here in this greenway around 5.30 or 6 o'clock when they say that a guy in his 20s or 30s ran by them and exposed himself to them. Teresa is outraged by the situation her daughter and niece were put in, and she worries how one disturbed person will impact her safe, tight-knit community. You don't want to see something exposed of situations like that. Them. You're afraid you're not, you, do you not let them play in front of you anymore? What do you do? You know? But she says she has faith that her neighbors, these people are on it, will keep a close eye out. We don't know where he's at yet, but we're going to find him. We're going to find him. And Shaylin says she hopes police will find that flasher soon so other kids don't experience what she has. I bet they wouldn't like it either.